Hey guys, welcome back for another episode of The Suited Shootist. And I'm going to jump right into it because obviously I think that this topic is very relevant. And uh, I'm curious, have you ever spent any time practicing not shooting at a target? Because a lot of people are going to say, no, what, what are you talking about? Um, or at best, when most people think of this concept, generally they have it in their mind of the type of don't shoot, shoot circumstances that you'll see in competition shooting, for example, where it is a target of a distinctly different color than the shoot targets. And typically there's also going to be an additional indicator on this contrasting target to further drive home the point that it does not need to be shot, which I haven't shot a ton of competition. I think I've got like maybe four outlaw matches under my belt. So I'm not going to go into it in that regard. There are some very high level people out there that have shot way more competition than me that can speak to the value of that piece of it, but it's not what I'm addressing here. Really what I want to get at is either scenario based training, whether it be force on force or something like, um, from my understanding, Carl Wren's home defense classes kind of fall into this uh, category where um, it's not necessarily, you're not going up against a live opponent, but you're going through what is effectively a, a shoot house in air quotes, but um, it's not that kind of the traditional shoot house that you'd think of. It's not, uh, you know, because obviously the, the, the mission set and the goals are very different. But again, the whole point of it is, have you put yourself in a circumstance to, with a gun in your hand, be forced to read an ambiguous situation and then determine whether or not that target warrants a muzzle and, and or warrants shot? This is something that's been on my mind pretty much since last year. I was first exposed to it when I took the counter robbery and EDC medical class with Daryl Bulky and Caleb Causey of uh, Hardwired Tactical and Lone Star Medics. And then again, we revisited some of those same types of shooting problems when I took the, uh, the NPE counter robbery class that was Daryl Bulky, Chuck Haggart, and Cecil Birch. Uh, <coughs> and, and those were the only times that I personally have really been presented with ambiguous circumstances that you have to go through the full Boyd cycle truly before you draw a pistol or before you decide to press a trigger. And it was really noteworthy the very first time where it was like, oh, okay, cool. Bow, 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 failure drill. And as I come off the target, I realize that the lethal threat indicator wasn't actually there. The um, Daryl faked me out. And so I say that because at that point, he and I had a pretty decent dialogue. I don't, it's not like he is going, if you take a class like that, he is not going to set a student up for failure, but he is going to put you in positions where you can make an imprudent force decision to drive home the point. And literally every moment of pistol training that I'd had up to that point was all predicated on the decision to shoot has already been made. And it became very apparent very quickly that that was a more conditioned response than I had thought. I'm not going to say that it was completely automated of buzzer equals draw and fire, but I allowed the automated process to override my critical brain, and it was a whole lot easier for that to happen than I had suspected previously. So what I'm going to very highly encourage 
everybody to do is, you know, once you are at a certain level of handgun performance, and, uh, you know, that's going to be different for, for everybody, but, you know, it's one of those where um, referencing John Hearn's chart from uh, who wins, who loses, and why in terms of firearms competency, you know, once, once you're passing the FBI qual or, uh, you know, once you're shooting a fast drill in, in six or seven seconds, excuse me, fast, it's not a drill, but if you're shooting the fast in, in you know, six or seven seconds, something in that intermediate level, um, if you've got a draw to first shot at seven yards on an A zone of about a second and a half, at that point, it's probably to your benefit to start pursuing some of those courses where you actually have to make a conscious decision as to whether or not drawing a pistol or whether or not actually pressing a trigger is appropriate. Because, again, to steal the line from Daryl, uh, skills that wire together fire together. And so if you've got rep after rep of shooter ready, standby, beep, ba da 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 then it can make the thinking part harder because it's not necessarily as high as it arguably needs to be in the overall priority stack. So I will also, con I'll, I'm going to preface this by saying at this point in my training career, the only training that I have pursued has been with hardwired tactical, Daryl Bulky specifically. To the best of my understanding, uh, there are several courses at KR Training. Some of them are force on force. Some of them are, you know, home defense oriented where there is some of this same type of decision making. And what I really appreciate about those is they don't just treat the targets as non-shoots, but anything that doesn't warrant getting shot doesn't warrant getting a muzzle either. And I think that's another real critical piece to drive home. Um, I have heard Chris Seipert suggest that they are going to be doing some force-on-force -force classes with Citizens Defense Research. I haven't had the privilege of taking that yet, but he's relatively close to me up in, uh, up in the Dallas area. So once those become available, you can bet I'm going to be signing up for one because, uh, again, I consider Chris a friend. I like supporting Citizens Defense Research. And in the same vein, uh, he strikes me as enough of a, a, a devious bastard that uh, I will be, I will be uh, impressed and amused by you know, some of the things he can come up with. But I want to hear about this down in the comments. Have you pursued some training that puts you in ambiguous situations that then forces you to, to actually work through the first half of the Boyd cycle, actually observing and actually uh, decide, you know, de deciding? Because we like to practice the act piece quite a bit. But it's arguably, even just in the process. It's already fairly far down the path. And I think we could all do well to spend a little bit more time on the, on the front 75% of that whole thing. So I would love to hear if you have experience with another course that does this kind of ambiguous, don't shoot, shoot type of scenario. The trick is, is that you really can't practice it on your own because you need somebody else there to inject the ambiguity. So if you've got some drills that you've heard of that you can just go with a shooting buddy out to the range, please put those down below as well. And aside from that, I hope everybody has a fantastic week. Stay dangerous and stay sharp.